We are sitting here in Ben Gurion Airport. The journey is about to begin. From the latest on Caribbean cruises to kosher safaris, pilgrimages to Jewish Eastern Europe, and award winning wines and international cuisine in sun drenched Tel Aviv. Sit back and enjoy the trip with the travel edition of the Jerusalem Post podcast. You're very, very welcome to join us as we take to the skies and take you on a very special journey. I'm David Harris, and this is my travel buddy, Mark Gordon. Earlier this year, I came to Ben Gurion Airport for the first ever Wizz Air Abu Dhabi flight from Abu Dhabi to Tel Aviv. Now, the very kind people at Wizz are taking us to Abu Dhabi to meet their chief executive, Case Van Schaik. Attention my passenger, this is the first call for priority boarding for Wizzair on flight 7086 to Abu Dhabi. Please proceed to the gate B6, thank you. We've had Wizz flying out of Tel Aviv for more than a decade. Um, is there a difference between the Wizz that we, we know and Wizz Abu Dhabi? Wizz, um, we, you know, uh, serving Tel Aviv from many European cities is very much part of the same Wizz Air Group uh, holding. Uh, it's a major airline in Europe, 138 aircraft uh, flying fr Central Eastern Europe, uh, Western Europe, uh, with two air operator certificates. So two air operators are part of the European uh, organization, one based in the UK and one in, uh, in Budapest. And they have their own uh, setup, their, their own individual airline uh, right to, uh, to operate. We are a deferred uh, AOC air operator. Uh, we are a UAE national airline, so we are majority owned by the Abu Dhabi uh, government. And uh, as a consequence, we are following all the regulatory aspects of a UAE national airline. There are six now with us, so we have the Emirates and the Etihad, uh, the Fly Dubai's of this world, and we are number six in the United Arab Emirates. We are very much attuned product uh, to the standard you know from Europe, and of course we are using this model to make it fit into the United Arab Emirates. And when it comes to our livery, you have seen on the tail of our aircraft, it is special. It literally shows Abu Dhabi, Wizz Air Abu Dhabi. But other than that, the crew is trained f according to the same standards. The product is the same uh, during in-flight. Uh, the baggage policies are the same. So we are very much leveraging our 17 years of experience into this market. From the point of view of Wizz Abu Dhabi, why was Tel Aviv one of your first routes? Tel Aviv knows us, Israel knows us, we are the second largest international airline serving Tel Aviv, uh, following of course uh, El Al. A lot of people, if not all of people, know us, they like our product, they like our unbundled product, something to choose, you can keep it as low price as possible, or you can add and choose add-ons, ancillary revenue services. At the same time, Israel came onto the green country list of Abu Dhabi, which meant that there would not be any restrictions on the Abu Dhabi side to enter uh, the country uh, and enjoy um, all what is on offer in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. So two reasons came together. Of course, prior to that, uh, the very positive news that the, uh, the Abraham Accord uh, resulted in, in, the, in the establishment of, uh, of the air route. And those three factors together made us without doubt say we need to get into uh, into Tel Aviv uh, the moment we can. Dave and I have just flown in from Tel Aviv on one of your brand new planes. Um, can you tell us a bit about the planes and, and the journey? We have deliberately chosen to bring our most modern aircraft uh, fresh from the Airbus factory uh, uh, last year, end of last year, directly into the United Arab Emirates. These are the Airbus A321 NEO aircraft. 239 seats in a one-class product with, as you have seen, a very clean, nice and tidy cabin uh, interior. The aircraft themselves have the most fuel efficient uh, engines. Uh, that's why the NEO, the next engine option, uh, and with that engine we are reducing our fuel consumption by 20%, which is very important for us. 
but most importantly thereafter as well, we are reducing uh, NOx emissions and we are uh, reducing our, our noise footprint. So all these factors together made us decide this is the, the right vehicle uh, of choice to bring to, uh, to United Arab Emirates. From Abu Dhabi, yes. you have the opportunity, um, you're already opening routes, but you have the opportunity to make places like Central Asia, the, the subcontinent, Southeast Asia, accessible. How much do you see that as a possibility for people coming from Tel Aviv, perhaps to include a stopover in Abu Dhabi and then move along using WIS the whole way? Yeah, well, our aircraft, the A321neo aircraft, will have about a five-hour radius in, in catchment area. So our model uh, to make ultra-low fares possible for our customer base, we fly the aircraft out and back on the same, uh, same day with the same crew. So that's how we utilize the aircraft to the maximum extent possible. Uh, but that gives us that five-hour radius around uh, Abu Dhabi. Now, our strategy will be that we are serving our traditional WIS markets back uh, home in Central Eastern Europe, uh, in the CIS countries. Uh, we are going to serve the GCC countries uh, around us, uh, the shorter routes. We are already flying into Egypt, so north, northeastern Africa are likely a destination or hotspots for us. And for sure, in due time, we will also venture out into the subcontinent, uh, so India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, those uh, directions. Now, that indeed opens up a tremendous opportunity to bring people into Abu Dhabi, to have them enjoy one to couple of days of stopover in the Emirates, enjoy the, the, the tourist hotspots of Abu Dhabi and the nightlife perhaps in Dubai, come back to the airport of Abu Dhabi, and you will see that there is a new Abu Dhabi airport being built. Uh, that will give a tremendous experience for our, uh, our passengers as well, and they can move on to other places in our network. Self-connecting, that's what we are calling it, for sure will, has our interest because we know this is under uptake. So more and more people are self-connecting, are finding ultra-low fare um, uh, carriers like Wizz Air, uh, able to bring them into a city and out again to another city with a, a fairly good product uh, from a stopover point of view. We're very lucky in Israel and in the Emirates and a lot of our listeners in America and in Europe that we've been vaccinated against COVID-19. How is the airline dealing with COVID-19 safe travel? We were uh, one of the, f I think, the, the front runners from an airline point of view in introducing a very clear policy when it came to, uh, comes to health and safety during the COVID uh, pandemic. The crew from the start are wearing the, the masks, uh, they're wearing the gloves, they are uh, trying to get as much as uh, physical distancing uh, during boarding disembarkation made possible. Contactless payment, we, we have removed uh, for, for good reasons the, the in-flight magazine, so it's all available for download before the flight. Um, and all these measures together, the sanitation, the, the cleaning of the aircraft interior after the flight, all put together, I think, with more and more people being vaccinated, uh, the, the crew being vaccinated, uh, that combined with airflow in the cabin, I think is, is, is safeguarding a very safe uh, travel experience. We were sitting on the front row, thanks to your generosity, and we saw people coming onto the plane and one of the flight attendants was holding for them um, disinfectant pads and you could see that there was a very positive response from those people coming on board as just another measure, measure of reassurance. Correct. We are, we are just, uh, of course, trying to make uh, uh, our passengers feel very much safe and at home uh, while flying with us and these are the small things which, which, uh, which make the difference. For the first few months, are we right to assume that most of the passengers on the Tel Aviv route are going to be Israelis? And do you anticipate there will be a lot of traffic the other way from Emiratis coming to Tel Aviv? Our traffic is predominantly from, uh, if not uh, entirely, from Israel into Abu Dhabi and, and back. As that is simply related to the fact that at the moment, from a visa point of view, it is not possible to enter Israel. 
uh, we hope that that will change. Uh, we have uh, indications that it may change as of July, but uh, we are very anxiously waiting for, for uh, uh, rather sooner than later. Uh, once that happens, we are quite confident that also Emirati uh, nationals and, and UAE uh, residents will find us in, in going for a very nice uh, holiday into, into Israel and enjoy the, the openness and the, the unique air route between the two countries. We've been looking on the website at the cost of the flights. And yeah. Most of the flights seem to cost less than a taxi from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. How do you make money on a route when the prices are so low? This is uh, all about ultra low fares. This is Wiz. Uh, we are uh, in for um, uh, offering affordable travel and connecting people. That's our purpose. Uh, that's what, uh, what we are here for. We are... A very healthy financial company. Uh, we are part of the Wizz Air Group. Uh, if you look at our our stock price development, it is higher than the pre-COVID uh, levels. Uh, that means there is a lot of uh, trust from the UK stock market in in Wizz Air. We are o- not all the time as as low as perhaps you have seen on the on the internet, uh, but there is a very healthy balance between promotions, price promotions to stimulate the market versus uh, different fare levels. The good thing is uh, that with our aircraft, with our aircraft utilization, our way we have organized uh, the airline, we are able to drive down costs, unit costs to such an extent that we are uniquely positioned to offer very low fares. And the difference between the two is a healthy margin. Anybody who's listening to this who wants to get more details, and as far as you're concerned, most importantly, book, 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 what's the best way to do that? Internet, uh, the the website wizair.com and our mobile app are the unique portals to understanding what we uh, we have on offer, what more is to come uh, in in due time. We have 23 routes on sale from Wizair Abu Dhabi. And uh, if you fly with us to uh, Abu Dhabi, have a nice stopover in the Emirates and then want to fly to Greece or or somewhere else, you are uh, the the right uh, right, uh, customer for us. Case, thank you so much for meeting us. Thank you for coming to Abu Dhabi and uh, experiencing our product. Thank you. Our pleasure. And now the latest news from the Jerusalem Post podcast Travel Edition. With improving ties between Israel and Morocco, Israeli carrier Israel says it will fly from Tel Aviv to Marrakesh starting next month. The six-hour non-stop flights are scheduled to launch on July 19th with a five times a week service. The European Union will open its borders to travellers coming from countries with a good epidemiological situation. The same goes for anyone who received the last recommended dose of any EU authorised vaccine. Prices for rooms in most Israeli hotels are within 5-10% to 10% of what they were in 2019. Dan Hotel CEO Ronen Nissenbaum told the Jerusalem Post. Demand for vacationing domestically is much higher this year than usual, causing prices to return towards pre-COVID levels. After losing control of El Al Israel Airlines, Knafaim Holdings bought a 49.9% stake in Cypriot airline TUS Airway, which operates flights to Europe, North Africa and Tel Aviv. A week after Malta said it became the first EU country to reach herd immunity, it reopened its borders on June 1st. The country launched a double discount incentive scheme saving travellers up to $240 per stay. Mark and I are now sitting in a a coffee shop in Abu Dhabi, which is the, the capital and, if you will, the main kingdom of the United Arab Emirates. It's phenomenally hot outside, so the air conditioning provides us with welcome comfort. And talking of welcome, we've been hosted so beautifully by Nanette Fairley, who's um, Australian in origin, but has lived in the Emirates for 28 years and has uh, been taking us around Saadiat Island. Nanette, welcome. Thanks, David. It's great to be here. We've just come inside after a fun afternoon at the Louvre on Sadia Island. I thought the Louvre was in Paris. Has somebody moved it? (laughs) The Louvre Abu Dhabi is actually the outcome of a cultural partnership between the UAE and France that was originally established in 2007. 
One of the things is the Louvre in Paris has many, many amazing pieces of art that are just in the basement. So part of the Louvre Abu Dhabi is to put some of those on show. Architecturally, it's magnificent on the outside, and I think we'll get to that soon. But what is there to do on the inside? Is it just impressionist paintings, for example? The inside is a reflection of what the outside looks like. I think it's very, very modern. Each of the galleries are very minimalist, very square. The art curation is also absolutely stunning. You're not walking around a gallery that is stuffed to the seams with lots of different pieces of art. They're beautifully curated, explained, there's lots of space. There's also an amazing area for kids. So don't think that the Louvre Abu Dhabi is only for for art buffs. There's an experiential area for kids where they get to dive into art history and really become a part of of the, the gallery. Being the culture vulture that I am, I went to the Louvre in Abu Dhabi and never actually went inside. (laughs) Instead, we decided to kayak around the outside, which for those people that know me, the thought of me in a kayak with David going around the Louvre is something to behold. Would you say it's more fun to kayak than go inside? Well, kayaking with you and David was actually a lot of fun. You're both... um, clearly in need of some experience kayaking (laughs) i've been told many times before that i'm not properly balanced but i don't think this is what they had in mind (laughs) yes yes well yeah um, i was um holding my breath a few times because i thought you guys might end up in the water but no um kayaking around the outside of the louvre in abu dhabi is a great experience we did it at sunsets and that was an added bonus But one of the things you can see certainly is the architecture from the water. And the architecture of the Louvre Abu Dhabi is absolutely stunning. So as I mentioned um, at the start of this interview, we're on Saadiyat Island, which is one of many islands of Abu Dhabi. What else is there on Saadiyat Island? What can you tell us about this place? Saadiyat, translated from the Arabic, means island of happiness. And one of the things that the Abu Dhabi government has tried to do on Saadiyat is really juxtapose both the culture and heritage and history of the area but also bring the the modernity of the Abu Dhabi Louvre and the Guggenheim. It really is one of the cultural centres of the Emirate and and of the UAE I think. As we kayaked around and when we weren't crashing into walls one of the highlights as we went around the building was the roof which is this massive steel I think steel but but certainly a metal dome looked like a night sky full of stars really really amazing architecture can you tell us a bit about the architecture on on the island sure and that is something that's spectacular about Sadiat is there are three world-renowned architects who've designed three of the buildings Jean Novell has designed Louvre Abu Dhabi Norman Foster and Frank Geary very well-known architects have designed two of the other buildings but specifically looking at Louvre Abu Dhabi it's like a a floating dome structure this web patterning across the dome it allows the sun to filter through but bizarrely it's not hot underneath it you would think that allowing the sun and allowing the, um, the heat of the summer to come through the roof into the building below, it would make it incredibly hot, but it's actually not. It's very cool. It's meant to represent the rays of sunlight passing through the date palm fronds in an oasis in the Arab world. So if you come to the Louvre Abu Dhabi for only one reason, for me it would be to just look in awe at the amazing architecture going to pick up on something you said there which which is i guess in terms of architecture totally irrelevant but it was talking about the heat uh, i know you don't like particularly the sun how on earth do you cope 28 years in this it, even in winter it's hot well you learn to love air conditioning because everything is air conditioned my my home uh, this lovely cafe that we're sitting in Um, You learn to put on sunscreen, wear sun shirts, wear hats. I think also you do adjust a little bit, but I will never love sitting outside in 42 degrees Celsius in the afternoon. That that is something I'll I'll never enjoy. On the drive to Sadia Island, we went past lots and lots of beautiful mangroves. Can we go kayaking around them next time? 
Absolutely. Although um, your skill level may need to improve because the, the technicality of uh, kayaking around the mangroves might be a little bit <laughs> beyond you Mark, at the Mark, it's, it's a shame this isn't video at this point because Mark's <laughs> jaw just dropped when it was suggested, Din and that, that our kayaking skills were I, not I, quite up to I, par. I thought by the, by the end we were near Olympic standard. We were actually able to turn right and left. Yeah, every, somebody has to come last in the Olympics. I mean, we turn quicker than the QE2, which, by the way, is parked up in Dubai at the moment. The mangroves are an important part of the environment here. The government has made a real effort to preserve the mangroves and to continue to build upon what is already there. But kayaking through them, you see both the mangroves, but you also see the whole of the ecosystem that's in a, in a mangrove um, swamp, all the insects and the fish and the, um, and the frogs, etc. So very definitely worth a visit if you like kayaking. No crocs here? No, I haven't seen any crocodiles. At least if we fall into the water, we're not going to get eaten. We might drown, but we won't get eaten. So given our kayaking, if they want to preserve the mangrove system, I wouldn't let us anywhere near it. Nanette, what I omitted to say at the start is that you're the founder of an organisation called What Nextology, which is truly fascinating and has a great mission. We're not going to go into details of it right now, but if anybody wants to know, where can they find out more? The website is uh, whatnextology.com and there's a contact form. If anyone has any questions about Abu Dhabi or Dubai or just wants to reach out and say hi, you can contact me through that website. Nanette Fairley, thank you so much and thank you for taking us round on a kayak and not killing us. It was so much fun. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> the Abu Dhabi Fact File. The main airport of the Emirate of Abu Dhabi is Abu Dhabi International. The main flag carrier is Etihad, which will take you to New York, Chicago, Washington, Toronto, London, Paris, Tel Aviv and most major capital cities. By September, Wizz Air Abu Dhabi will operate 25 routes including Tel Aviv. The airport is 10 minutes drive from the Yaz Island Resort, 30 minutes from downtown Abu Dhabi and about an hour from the Palm Jumeirah in Dubai. Recommended hotels include the Hilton Yaz Island and the W at Yaz Marina Circuit. Hotels on Yaz Island currently provide excellent value for money compared to the more expensive downtown and Sadiat Island hotels. One US dollar will buy you 3.67 UAE dirham. Abu Dhabi has a desert climate and sunny blue skies can be expected throughout the year. The months of June through September are generally extremely hot and humid with average daytime temperatures over 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. Emirati food is infused with spices and ingredients from throughout Asia and the Middle East. Think cinnamon, saffron, turmeric, nuts, limes and dried fruit. Being a coastal city, fish is the star of many local dishes. Vegetarian Indian food can be found widely including the Bikaner Vala Indian restaurant. Yasmal also has a cheesecake factory. The Emirates Palace, Armed Forces Officers Club and Hilton Hotel Yaz Island are able to provide kosher food. Sadly, our time in Abu Dhabi has come to a close. It was a whistle-stop tour, but a lot of fun. I'd like to say a big thank you to Kays and Wiz Air for bringing us here and to Nanette for taking us kayaking around the Louvre. Hopefully we will be back in Abu Dhabi a little bit later this year, bringing you a special with lots of voices and lots of sounds. More details on that still to come. If you enjoyed this podcast, remember to give us a five-star rating and write a review. If you didn't enjoy the podcast... Still give us a five-star <laughs> rating. <laughs> That's it for this edition of the Jerusalem Post podcast travel edition. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.